Good morning from Panhandle Outdoors with Winston Chester. Panhandle Outdoors, your source for fishing, hunting, and information for folks who enjoy the great outdoors. Now sit back, relax. It's Panhandle Outdoors. Good morning, folks. Welcome to Panhandle Outdoors. I'm Winston Chester. I'm glad you're here on this cold and frosty Friday morning. You'll have a little bit of ice on your windshield throughout the Panhandle. It's not as heavy as it was the other day when it was real cold, but you will have some, so be prepared for that. Our weather brought to us by Haney Technical Center right there on Baldwin Road and Highway 77. For all your educational needs, run by and see the staff there. A lot of good folks work there and all kinds of different programs. Right now it's 34 right here, 33 in Mariana, 43 in Apalachicola, 36 up in uh, over in South Walton, but in Vernon, y'all are cold. It's 30 degrees in Vernon right now. And when I woke up this morning, I'm, uh, I'm at 32 when I get in my truck. So it's, it was cold. High today, barely getting in the 60s. It may break 60 or 61. Low tonight, 44. Won't be quite as cold. Water temperature stays around 64. It's not going to be quite as cold because we'll get some cloud cover coming in and sort of hold some of that warmth in. The uh, front is coming through on Sunday. It's going to be like a dry front. It's not going to be that effective uh, as far as anything going on weather-wise as, as moisture or anything like that. We won't have that. So we will have a little bit of uh, wind. In fact, we're going to have a whole lot of wind. So be prepared for that again. It is blown, uh, like Blair Morgan say, it seems like it's just blown for months and months. Uh, and, and that's the uh, that's situation. So we just deal with it, okay? Boating forecast, wind's going to come out of northeast at 7 and 14 and seas 1 to 3. This north-northeast wind will be prevalent now for a while. River readings. We'll go ahead and show it. There's not much uh, going on there. The Apalachico River, Blunstown, is at point three foot. It shocked the hatchet. It just has a small bump in it. It's reading at a 1.3 right there at Careville. It's going to bump up to about a 1.4 later on today and then start dropping. be a slow drop, but you will be able to see it. And uh, the Carl Vernon Marine services our tide chart. We've had some really good tides this week, and this weekend is going to be some good tides too, good strong tide, and I don't know if it'll be negated much by the wind. We'll have to wait and see. But looking on, on today, we're looking at a low tide this morning right at 6.02, about when the show goes off, and then uh, it's coming in all day uh, up until 7.46 tonight, so good strong tide. And also tomorrow's tide is really strong, a good low morning tide and incoming tide all day. But like I say, that north wind, north-northeast wind, in certain areas that keep it blowed out some. So be aware of that. Each uh, Friday, we'd like to mention Sea Quarters Marina, one of the big sponsors there. I, I call them, and they they're, uh, must be busy now loading the boats up. But we'll be seeing the folks at Sea Quarters. We're going down Tuesday afternoon and, and Tuesday night and visit with them down there. So we'll touch base with them and maybe bring back some good news for you all about the fishing front down at Sea Quarters Marina in Carabelle, Florida the Pearl of the Florida Panhandle. All right, let's take our first break and we'll be right back. Come join the Panhandle Outdoors team just in time for the holidays. Beat the rush and stock up on our team shirts and hats in a wide variety of colors and sizes. For your convenience, we offer a Panhandle Outdoors shop at panhandleoutdoors.net. Simply visit our website and click shop to bring in the holiday season. Be a member of the Panhandle Outdoors team. Florida's only live daily outdoor show. We are so lucky to live in North Florida. We have some of the best fresh and saltwater fishing in the world. My biggest problem is not catching fish, but trying to decide what kind of fish I want to catch. No matter what I'm after, I always stop at Sunjammers Water Sports first. They have just what I need, rods and reels, line, tackle, and most important, fly bait. Yes, sir, we sure are lucky. Bill Kramer's Chevrolet Cadillac Buick GMC is Panama City's exclusive full-line dealership. Built on a 45-year foundation of trust and total customer satisfaction in all departments. Including our huge pre-owned department, where we'll pay top dollar for your current automobile as a trade-in. Or we'll place your vehicle on our lot and help you sell it. At Bill Kramer's Chevrolet Cadillac Buick GMC. Four decades, three generations, one tradition. 
Lost City living is simply better without glasses. The Eye Center of North Florida offers the most advanced cataract surgery using lifestyle lens implants, which allow you to see all distances glasses free. Our surgeons perform this quick and painless procedure at our accredited surgery center. When it comes to your vision, trust your local experts in surgical eye care. The Eye Center of North Florida. Hi, welcome. I've got a lot of stuff to go over today, so let's get going on it. Uh, Stan Kirkland sent me this email, and it didn't happen here, but it happened down in Lake, Lake Okeechobee, but I want to share it with you because it can very well happen here. Make sure you know what the situation is. Uh, it's on duck hunters. Uh, Officer Michael Davis on Water Patrol watching duck hunters on Lake Okeechobee when it heard an airboat fire up and start running around. It goes on to say the vessel ran for about 10 minutes and then shut off. With binoculars, Officer Davis watched it as it fired up again and ran for about 10 or 15 minutes and cut off. He did that three or four times. It goes on down to say, Officer made contact with operators. He found some duck hunters over in a blind. Y'all know where I'm headed with this if you, if you hunt out on the water. The officer asked the operator if he was running the uh, airboat during, in the marsh area. He said, no, there were some four-wheelers back there doing that. So uh, anyway, he'd already had enough witnesses and he'd had enough evidence and charged the guy with, and the duck hunters with rallying migratory birds. And that is an illegal thing to do. If you set a group of duck hunters in a duck blind and then get out on a large body of water and run your boat, we wouldn't do air boats up here, but you could do your, your boat motor. Lake Seminole is a large body of water, Lake Talquin, East Bay. And I, I couldn't help but to think when I read this, I chuckled because a good friend of mine, David Barnes, and I duck hunted back in the early 70s. And we did that one time accidentally, not knowing at that time, we didn't know it was illegal. But we'd, he'd, he'd set me in a blind, and we'd set out a decoy. That right out in uh, West Bay, not too far from the airport, we had set up a nice stick blind, and they had a big old spread of decoys out. And, and David said, well, I'm going to go look for the birds now. And David went all the way up into West Bay and up into North Bay and riding around just looking for them. Well, he did scare some up and, and got them flying. And, and they, some of them did come on in. I shot some of them, and he came back. He heard me shooting. and. He waited a minute till the bird went on by and came back. And then we, we uh, go ahead. We went and set up and put him in a blind, and because we, we found where the birds were, and they, and but they wouldn't fly. But then we realized later what he had done. He had technically rallied the birds accidentally, but he was out looking for them, and I was in a blind. But that's illegal. So make sure you're aware of that. It goes on a, in a big body of water. If you uh, hunt a, a creek or something, uh, that rallying won't won't be applicable. But be aware of that and make sure you don't do it. Speaking of duck hunting. Here's a, a boat right here. We had Kurt Davis on. He's about finished with his duck boat. He's building this by hand himself in his garage. Nice looking wooden bateau there. Good looking boat. Already got the camouflage and he'll be ready to go in it soon. And while we're on ducks, I'm going to, let me quickly, because the season opens tomorrow. And let me just tell you, I'm going to have to read these limits because it's, it, you're going to have to take these with you in the field, okay? Six duck, a six duck limit shall consist of no more than four mallards. No more of two of those can be female, so only two female mallards, but you have four mallards. One black duck, one model duck, this is all within that six, aggregate of six, okay? It cannot be more than these. It cannot be more than one whistling duck. It cannot be more than two pintails. It cannot be more than one canvas back. It cannot be more than two redheads. It cannot be uh, more than two scops, or what we call bluebills. Uh, it can't be more than three wood ducks. And it can't be more than four scooters, okay? All the others, you can have six, like a, a ringneck. A lot of ringnecks out there, you have six of those. But So you have a combination of that, so you can't be like two wood ducks, two mallards, and two bluebills, and that's okay. But you can't have more than those. And also, the bag limit on mergansers is five to ten. Why in the world somebody want to shoot a merganser? Uh, if you ever eat one of them, they taste, it's, it's, a, it's a bird that tastes like a fish. We ate one one time with another teenager, or a young teenager, and we... That's the first and last one I ever ate of merganser, but beautiful duck and all. But they're, uh, and we have some of them up here in the woods and all. Okay, I take care of our duck hunting. This weekend will be great bird shooting. We got dove season opening up, and and you need to be aware now. This this cold front has brought in some migratory birds, and also the dove dove and ducks just going to be really strong. Okay, keep in mind too. I was going to mention we always talking about rutting dates and all. I'm going to go ahead and put them up here and take a look at it. People, 
debate this constantly is where the deer is in rut. And this is from the FWC biologist. This is not Winston Chester's uh, proposal. This is from their biologist on a study they did actually in 2009. I just I put it up before, but you can see the dates. The dates, early date is east of us, and it works. It works from east to west. So if you're in an eastern viewing area, you can see even over here in Tallahassee. And all we're talking about this weekend. Some of these plantations, the other side of Monticello, Jefferson County, they're, they're already starting rut over here. And then down in here, January, down here in Gulf County, and then, then it goes on up here. But actually, December 24th, right in there, in that area right there. Then Jackson County, and then over west of us, way back in February. So it's different dates. You just can't say one particular day. January 4th, up there in uh, home uh, up in Jackson County, the northern part of Jackson County. So that's the whitetail breeding chronological report done by the FWC biologist and all and they, they did an extensive look at that so and I'll mention that some more during the year but just if you want to go ahead and plan a lot of folks plan a lot of hunters plan their vacation days around the deer rut I, I, I try to do the same thing it's always I've always loved and had good luck on what I, on Martin Luther King weekend that we have always had a Monday off and that three or four days in that area uh, it's always been productive, so that's sort of a benchmark around here for a lot of us hunters in this area. Okay, we're going to take our first break and we'll be right back. Captain's Cove Marina, designed with fishermen in mind. Easy access to the best fishing along Florida's forgotten coast. Deep sea fishing, fly fishing from a kayak, cruising endless miles of bayous, bays, and the intercoastal waterway. Count on the captain's crew to work hard to make your day on the water the best ever. Captain's Cove Marina, 1617 Grouper Avenue, Port St. Joe, 850-227-3357. Panama City Beach is known as one of the top dive destinations in Florida. Divers Den offers daily dive charters that can accommodate up to 13 divers. Our boat captain is U.S. Coast Guard certified and a caddy dive instructor. We have trained professionals who offer a variety of scuba certifications. Come see us at our two locations on Thomas Drive and Tindall Parkway. Harold Milling Company, rough and tough dog food. Harold Milling Company builds it. They build hog feed. They build dairy feed. They make chicken feed. They have specialty feed for rabbits. If you got a worm farm, grandmother used to have a worm farm. Look at the Harold Milling Company. You want to go down and get your, <clears throat> the dog's not running anymore. That's all over with. You want to get that 16% uh, and drop down from the 26% protein. You don't want over over to get fat. Harold Milling Company, you can buy it almost any feed store in the Panama City area. When you stop by Blue Water Outriggers, you will find everything for your outdoor adventure. Stock up on all your favorite brands and shop for some of the latest outdoor gear and accessories. You can also shop online and have your orders delivered straight to your home. Our flagship store is nestled right off the of Highway 98 in the Port City Shopping Center, just steps away from the Port St. Joe Marina. You will love our selection, our prices, and our friendly service. Ah, welcome back. First of all, we'll start this section off with a sad note. We're going to send our condolences from Pantan Outdoors to the Jack Wingate family. Jack passed away yesterday afternoon about 2.30. Jack was an icon. He, he was a true legend among fishermen throughout America. He owned and operated the Lunker Lodge on Lake Seminole out, out outside of Bainbridge, Georgia. And I, everybody's known Jack. Everybody knows of Jack. I've known him since a teenager. And he was just, anybody in the bass community would talk about Jack Wingate at Lunker Lodge. They had some huge tournaments there. They, they hosted the national championships there time and time again. He was just well respected. He, he wrote some uh, articles and his favorite saying was, cuz you, sh you should have been here yesterday. And he always say yesterday because they bit then. And uh, because when somebody came up and said they're biting, he'd always tell them they bit yesterday. And not yesterday, but yesterday. And it was just, uh, so uh, he'd been sick a while and our condolences to, to their, to, to Jack Wingate's family, okay? Also, got a call yesterday after the show, and I take for granted a lot of us use email, but everyone does not use email. So if you want to enter a contest, or I'm talking about a contest, just send it to me. Here's my home address. Uh, there's my email on top, but you can send it to Winston Chester at 6726 Topher Boulevard, Southport, Florida, 32409. 
and you can enter, you can enter your wife, you can enter yourself. Try not to enter your dog, but try, you know, just be honest about it, but you can enter each entrance for anybody in the family. All right? We, we're right on the verge now. Next week is like the week before Christmas. This is the week before the week before. It's amazing how time is flying. Christmas is going to be here. And a lot of us get time off for Christmas. A lot of businesses close down between Christmas Day and New Year's. And I always make myself up a little uh, hit list or a little mini bucket list to do during Christmas holidays. And I always try to get to it and try to plan ahead. I know you do too. I always like to, of course, first of all, I want to do some hunting in different places. And I definitely plan on doing that. But I also like to do a little bit of fishing, and Christmas is a really good time. And sheephead is starting to come in around then, and I always try to find some sheephead. Also, you know, if it's cold snap, I like to really get up into the uh, mouth of the creeks on speckled trout. So I want to urge you to go ahead and start making, thinking in the back of your mind what you plan on doing during the Christmas break to get outdoors. One of the things that, that is really a lot of fun is getting out walking in the woods. I know that may sound silly to some folks, but... Getting, just getting out walking in the woods and, and getting out on, on these winter days where it's not too hot, no snakes or anything, just, and just walking and looking for deer sign or whatever, especially around the middle of the day. Uh, my wife and I really enjoy doing that on occasion. And also, and she always brings her camera along. She's a good photographer. And we got this picture last night from our own Tom Gurley. Look at this out at St. Andrews State Park. Tom took a picture of these a pair of pelicans, and a great picture. Tom, and, and that's what I'm saying. You can just take your camera with you as you go along to uh, walking through the woods or walking along the shoreline, the St. Andrews State Park is just a, a wealth of information as far as finding good stuff to take pictures of. One, and also I'm gonna point out different boat routes for winter fishing. And I always like to talk about, you know, different places. I was talk, Blair was talking about Wednesday on Whiskey George Creek on Appalachia, on Appalachicola Bay there that flows into it. I always like to start off on Saint, on uh, West Bay Burnt Mill Creek, the boat landing at Burnt Mill Creek. How to get there off 388, that's the airport road up here. There's the airport road. Here's Burnt Mill Creek right there, and there's a boat landing right down here. And what that can do when you launch your boat, that gives you access in, into West Bay, and it's a good little channel here. Some excellent fishing in the wintertime as these fish start working their way up there, and, and you can get on over to the steam plant and fish over in that direction too, okay? Speaking of Christmas coming, I know we're all thinking about Christmas gifts and all, they're trying to trying to find things that that our friends and fam our family and our friends want. One thing to talk about briefly are gloves. Now we take it for granted. And I just brought I pit, pulled out some of my gloves last night, just some different kind of gloves. And of course, the, you know the big bulky gloves. You can wear those just when you're walking and stuff like that. We don't really need to use your hands. These are some big bulk, bulky gloves. They're warm. They're sort of not good for anything except just keeping your hands warm. I personally like some of these these grip gloves. These are just uh, these. I have a good grip on them. They're they're called thinsulated. They're insulated, but they're thin and it's really good on gripping. And here's another pair like that too. With you can see the grip maybe on this right here. They've got some nice nice grip on just being able to pick things up and thin enough you can operate it. So when you buy somebody some gloves, you can do that. One of my favorite pair, and I'll show you this pair. I'm gonna actually put this on for you. They're actually sort of a combo, a hybrid glove, if you would. Okay, you put them, your fingertips are exposed, so you can actually do stuff like that, but you don't want to leave them exposed, and it just has a little flip over like a mitten. So well, if you're sitting, in, especially in a tree stand, you can stay really warm, nice warm gloves there, and, but when you see that big old butt walking out, all you do is just flip that off, and then you got your trigger finger, or if you uh, want to answer your cell phone and tell your wife you'll be a little bit late because that buck's pretty close by, whatever, you can use your fingers like that. So I, this is one of my favorite pairs. So, of course, they're all camouflaged, but when you're picking out gloves, it's, it's a good present, it's a good stocking stuffer, and you always need more than one pair of gloves. Believe me, you always need more than one pair. I keep some in my truck, and I keep some at the house, and uh, around a hunting camp, you always want to have a couple of pair in there because most of the time, you're going to lose one of them. I think you know what I'm talking about. Also, when you're shopping, I know we've talked about this before. If you can, add, and I, we try to make a special effort. I know some of y'all do the same thing. If you can buy something that's made in America, it is so important, folks. I just cannot, and I tell my students this too. Just try to take a minute. This is a made in America store, so, but it's the same symbol, made in America, but there's actually a store now where it has 100% American made products. And I was just so happy to see that. I was looking across it last night. So be aware of that. Buy, buy made in America if you can, and, and shop with our local folks if you can. 
I, I know we, we, we buy stuff online a little bit, just a little bit, but uh, the vast majority of stuff we buy are from our local folks, especially our sponsors, and, and, and you know, it's just, it's just good for our community, okay? We talked about that before. Another thing, I showed that picture of Mike Hutton yesterday, and he emailed me last night. It was his wife, uh, Pam, but the dog's name is Blue. I couldn't remember the dog's name, but the dog's name was Blue on that sailboat yesterday, all right? One more thing, too, before we close out for break. I've done a lot of uh, searching for this, and soul searching is whether or not to do another uh, edition of a full box. And I, we're, I'm thinking seriously now, we have called Tallahassee to Rose Printing, and folks, I get so many requests around Christmas time for this book, and I almost feel bad that I cannot supply it to folks. I mean, uh, I, so I'm probably going to do another printing, so it definitely won't be in by Christmas, but maybe by the springtime or early summer. We plan on doing that. So I tell, I'll tell you more about this, but if you want to get put on a list or something, email me or call me. So I will. I, I'm pretty sure we're going to do this again just because of the demand for it. I just I, I really do feel bad when folks want to do it for a Christmas present and we don't get it. Okay? Tarpon Dock Seafood, we're going to give away. I'm looking for my drawing. I'm going to reach back. Okay. On a pickle jar. Here's what we're giving away to tar, Tarpon Dock. I talked to Emmy yesterday. She and Maria, I'm going up the next week, and they're starting to do their party trays, and to get them all lined up. I'm going to film them doing a party tray, and they just do some great party trays. So be aware of that as you're getting together in your social functions for, for the uh, Christmas holidays. Now, we're going to give away two things. The first one will be a half gallon of gumbo. Now, doesn't that sound good for this weekend? It's cold weather, and get a half warm up a half gallon of gumbo. That sounds delicious. That'll be the first prize. The second prize will be a red snapper, a whole red snapper. So be aware of that. Now, and call me now when you, when you get your, get your name called. Call me later on today so I can confirm it. If you don't call back, then I'll, I'll, uh, I'll let them know that so they won't make a party trade for anybody. Okay, this winner of the half-gallon gumbo is Linda Morrissey. Linda Morrissey. Okay, you're right there. That's a gumbo. And the winner of the red snapper is going to be... Barry Miller, Barry Miller. All right, I know, I know your wife's happy about that, and you are. So you don't have to cook. You don't have to cook it this weekend. All right, let's take a break. We'll be back with our famous Friday fishing forecast. This holiday season, give the gift of nature. A walk through nature, Florida's Emerald Coast, is the perfect gift for the nature lover on your list. Whether they live close by or far away, they will love seeing the beautiful seascapes, wildlife, and lighthouses that Florida's Gulf Coast has to offer. Only $14.95 plus $4.95 shipping at naturewalkdvd.com or send check or money order to the address on the screen. A walk through nature, visually stunning. My name's Captain Rick Corley. I'm a SAMS accredited Marine Surveyor, NAM certified Marine Surveyor, and I am Certified Marine Investigator. Been surveying since 1969. Was taught by my father, who is the oldest, longest practicing marine surveyor in the world. We do all types of survey, commercial or pleasure. Steel, aluminum, fiberglass, wood, makes no difference. Give us a call at 850-527-5287. Or visit us online. We'd appreciate your business. What do you value? The feel of fertile soil? The smell of fresh cut? the pride of an autumn harvest, the belief that it's not really work if you enjoy it, and above all, the end justifies the tractor. Kubota. Power, versatility, comfort. Everything you value in a tractor. See and save on all Kubota tractors and equipment at Soul Tractor today. The greatest investment we can all make is in the lives of our children and grandchildren. To help you invest for retirement, handle your IRA rollover, protect your family with life or long-term care insurance, call my dad for an appointment at his new office on Wilson Avenue behind Lowe's. And he'll give you a copy of his most recent book, Seven Steps to Serious Money. For, for free! Walter Woodrick, your serious money advisor! Okay, welcome back. Let's start off, of course, with our Express Lane Fishing Game forecast in this section. We have two times a day. We're looking at 10.51 to 12.51, right in the middle of the day. And then tonight, from 11.42 to 1.42, brought to us by Express Lane, American-owned and American-operated. 
Let me go ahead and give you tomorrow's time also because tomorrow's only one time on Saturdays. It's from 11.42 to 1.42, that block right in the middle of the day right there. So be aware of that. Of course, you can go online and get these times there. It's listed online along with the famous Friday fishing forecast. So always go online and pick that up and all those times are there if you want to pick those up. And speaking of famous uh, Friday fishing forecast brought to us by Tarpon Dock Seafood, we're going to have to hustle because we're running out of time. It's starting pretty soon. I had a, we're going to start doing our fishing forecast in the front of the show. Uh, Scott Lindsay advised me to do that. I think that's a good advice. So anyway, let's get on to South Walton. Bruce Mixon uh, said the best fishermen this week were the birds, the seagull, seagulls, and the pelicans. He'd been, he was around Destin twice this week, and fishing was slow around Destin. A uh, few reds and flounder caught in the past. The best fishing was the mouth of the river and creeks so where there were uh, some, some good flounder fishing. The 331 Causeway, which is sort of a bellwether of what's going on over there, 331 Causeway, hardly, hardly anybody was fishing there this week. It was real slow. So anyway, maybe to pick up. Same thing here in Panama City. The pier was uh, slowed down this week with the exception of, of the Bonita was really strong. The water temperature was 63 degrees. Whiting has started coming in. I I'm, I'm bet you this weekend will be some good whiting caught on the pier. There were some nice catches of redfish brought into the redfish tournament over at Carl Gray Park. But, you know, the wind continues to be a factor, and it's been a, a detrimental factor for fishermen for the last uh, month or two. So you, you got to you just get, we're getting blown around out there, and you're going to have to just find some good places. I saw a Facebook posting last night by a fishing guide who fished yesterday, and he had a rough time in the wind, you know, as a, as a professional guide. Down in St. Joe, now Plexicola Bay, Blair Morgan talked about it Wednesday. He said the same thing down there with the wind. You got to get out of the wind. Some of those places like Whiskey George Creek, those guys were able to get in that creek area and actually stay out of the wind and had, had some really good luck. It was full of trailers during the week. And they were using grubs under a popping cork, and some of them were just using grubs fishing with, with white grubs fishing that area. And whiting were also being caught in the surf. This is you know excellent time of year for whiting. And we'll be talking to Carabelle, like I said, I'm going down Tuesday to visit with them. And, We'll be talking with them about what's going on. I'm looking at next week's schedule. This is how I do my schedule, real sophisticated here. And but my, next week we have something planned every day. Usually I sort of have a couple of days open where I can be flexible. Next week I have something every day, so it'll be a great week on Panhandle Outdoors. We'll be giving some stuff away, and also have some good guests and some good video next week. And I, I want to tell y'all how much I appreciate you watching Panhandle Outdoors and uh, inviting us into your homes every every morning and. I just want to continue to you know, bring good news about outdoors and hopefully uh, a lot of y'all hopefully will benefit from it. Look, you do something good for somebody today, make the outdoors party world and have a great weekend and God bless. Thanks for joining us for Panhandle Outdoors with Winston Chester. Panhandle Outdoors features hunting, fishing and other activities and information to help you enjoy the great outdoors. Join us next time for Panhandle Outdoors.